Hey, I'm Nellie Kolbeck, and today I have the wonderful Mary Beth Shaw with me. And Mary Beth Shaw, if you don't know her, she's an amazing mixed media artist. She actually worked in the insurance industry for 18 years, which I find very interesting before she quit her <laughs> job in 2000. And she is the author of two amazing books, which I own also, Flavor for Mixed Media and Stencil Girl. She's also a columnist for Somerset, a studios magazine, and a golden artist educator. But wait, there's more. She's also <coughs> the owner and founder of Stencil Girl Products, which if you don't know, you have to know this company. They make the most amazing stencils, and I don't only say that because I'm part of the <laughs> designers. <laughs> so hi, Mary Beth. Thank you so much hi, for being yeah. here. It's, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your artwork. Okay. I um, I started, well, you know, I've been an artist since I was a child, but in the year 2000 was when I kind of started on a more serious route with my artwork. And that was when I quit my insurance day job. It's like, sometimes I think back and I'm like, how was I ever in the insurance industry? <laughs> but anyway, um, and I started on a path of collage at mm -hmm. first, and that led me into painting and so I sort of did mixed media collage, and then I moved from using vintage photographs into more of abstract work, and I've been there lately, although I'm going back to collage now. I'm really excited about doing collage again. Yeah. So yeah. you use all kinds of media too, right? You're, um, I do. You use acrylic paint, you use oil paints? I well, I do. I recently took a class using um, oil paint and cold wax medium, and we also used um, the pigment sticks, and oh my gosh, it rocked my world. It just, um, I had never used oil paint before, and now I'm in love. That sounds so cool. So wait, so it's cold wax? How, how do I have to envision, how do you get it mixed with the pigments then? Well, the cold wax is like, okay, so Dorlance, have you ever used Dorlance before? No. Well, it's a wax that some people use in their journals and they wax their journal pages with it. Yeah. But it's a cold wax medium and Gamblin makes one. Oh, yeah. And so it's like a, I don't know, the consistency of it is almost like a, um, you know, a hardened, you know, coconut oil that you would cook with and when oh. it hardens, it's about that consistency. And you mix it with the oil paints, and then you paint with it. And you don't use any heat or anything like with the encaustic, no fire. But it's a totally different way to use wax in your work. And I really liked it because, of course, you can use stencils with it. Yeah, them. yeah, that sounds yeah. cool. I yeah, can't wait cool. to see your artwork with it. Thank you. I, I heard you I'm have an actually an exhibition coming up um, next year with um, this kind of... I do. I do. In June of 2017, I'm part of a group here in St. Louis called the Wax Collective, and we're nice. doing a wax show, which is going to be hot and cold wax pieces. And um, of course, I haven't painted anything yet. Uh, it's nothing like a little pressure to motivate me. <laughs> I always feel like when I have a deadline like that, like an exhibition, I actually crank out my best work or so I feel for myself because I like the pressure of that it's something I do for myself, but also the pressure of delivering something for an exhibition makes you really go. So I think sometimes I we need that, right? I totally agree. And I think the reason, I'm the same way, exactly. And I, that's because we're German girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I need to perfect my accent. But <laughs> oh, no, don't go anyway, there. <laughs> um, I think the reason that is, is because when you work at the last minute like that and you're in a hurry and under deadline, your critic moves out of the way mm -hmm. because you don't have time to True. let your critic get involved. And for me, that's the best thing ever. You that's know. true. Do you have problems with um, having your inner critic talking to you while you're working usually? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, I've been known to come. Uh, well, I used to have my studio in our house, which I don't now, but I would come out of the basement, which is where my studio was, and I'd look at my husband and I'd say, do not let me go back down there. <laughs> Whatever happens, do not let me go back down there. And he'd be like, why? And I said, 
because I've got something good going on and I'm afraid I'm going to screw it up if I go down there. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, we're all monster. like that. I think no matter, I don't know, I just have talked to so many artists and we're all our own worst critics, you know. Do you feel like when you go sometimes back, I have that sometimes, something that I really liked and I did it and then I look at it two years, three years later and I'm like, what the heck was I thinking? This is, <laughs> this is I don't, I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to have it shared. Nobody should look at it. And it's so interesting because, you know, why you loved it at that point, right? It's, it's. No, I do that. I do that for sure. And I, I made a piece for my husband for his office when he was still doing corporate jobs and, um, And I came across it recently, and I I, I took it away from him. <laughs> I'm like, uh-uh, you're not displaying that anywhere. <laughs> That's funny. He probably still loves the piece. He does like, Don't still take love it away it. He's from like, me. well, I really like it. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mary Beth, um, with your um, being also um, a company owner in a creative field, so what does your creative day look like with everything, um, like a typical day, if there is something like that? It's a, it looks like a hot mess is what it looks like. <laughs> I try to get up every day and do a little bit of exercise, first of all. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I try to go to my studio. Mm -hmm. I do go to my studio physically. But what happens from there is kind of up for grabs. Um, I like to do some creative things, and sometimes that will be just um, making things for Stencil Girl, making samples, Or maybe doing a promotional video or some advertising videos or, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like anymore it's tough for me to get into my own art as much mm -hmm. as I would like. But that's okay. I mean, I'm in a creative field, so it sure beats the insurance business. But then um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I try to stay at home and catch up with office mm -hmm. functions, meaning I sit in my office and actually work. Um, but that's hard for me because I'm... I'm just sort of hyperactive naturally, and it's hard for me to stay focused yeah. like that, you know. But I try to do planning, and I work with my assistant, Carol, and, and so forth, and we have meetings and that sort of thing. That's cool. So. Do you feel, um, I don't know if you know, but I have been a paralegal for 17 years before oh. I actually became an artist. So I often think that this actually helps me a lot in my career now in how I structure my work although I would lie if you know I would say that I'm always out of my jammies by nine o'clock in the morning but anyway do you feel that like having worked in the insurance comp uh, industry has helped you with what you're doing now yes it has helped me organizationally it's helped me um It helps me focus on deadlines and so forth. You know, artists get a bad rap for being flaky. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I might be quirky, but I meet deadlines. And I try to, you know, follow the instructions mm -hmm. regarding deadlines and so forth. But, yeah, like you, I was in more of the legal end of the mm -hmm. insurance. I was on the claims side and dealt with attorneys and managed attorneys. So I know there's a lot of structure there. Yeah. And it does help. Yeah. It really does Definitely. Um, I, I actually, do you miss like any part of that um, at all? Like, I know it's a weird question, but like... The salary. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I used to make a lot of money and I had some amazing benefits. And now it's like, oh, figure out where the next, you know, right. you have to always, you know how it is. It's like you have to kind of reinvent yourself all the time. Yeah. And there's certain challenges in that. And um That's true, yeah. and you you know, like you know, whatever you do, it's gonna it's gonna come. Um, I I think I miss that too a little bit. I mean, I wouldn't trade off at all, and I think I miss sometimes, even though I used to complain about all the clients, <laughs> not all of them, but most. <laughs> that was my kitten that just fell off of the piano. By the way, I was watching out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like, this is not gonna end well. <laughs> And he hit my my thing of markers, and a bunch of markers fell on the floor. That's cute. 
you know, Mary Beth just got the most adorable new little kitten. And um, if you heard it, that's what it does. I know. It's like my Facebook. My Facebook has become all kitten all the time, whether you like it or not. It's like so embarrassing. I like it. So, yeah. Hey, Mary Beth, you have been a jump starter for many, many times. I actually should have looked it up. I don't know. I think you have been there for four times or this is the fourth time. Mm -hmm. So what do you get out of it or like how do you feel and what do you think that people in general get out of it? Well, I love starting something new at the beginning of the year. It's for me, it's a fresh start time. And, um, you know, here where I live, it's cold in January and to have something to look forward to every day is so fantastic to have a new video every day. And I like that the selection of teachers that you get for creative jumpstart, it's always people I don't know all the people, mm -hmm. which is exciting for me to see some fresh faces and, I just find the projects, the way that you um, you make us limit our time, mm -hmm. like we aren't allowed to just film on and on and on. <laughs> and I've been involved in projects like that where you have to make a really long film. And these are to the point and they're tight and they're they're fantastic. They're so mm -hmm. inspiring. And I have found myself really going back to some throughout the year. And I don't know. I just enjoy it. It's a great um, it's a great way to start the year. Do you feel it's um, it's interesting because um, over the years, this is the sixth year I'm doing this, um, you know, you, I always listen to the students, what they say, and um, we have some people that have been with us from the very beginning. And once in a while, though, you hear people say, I wish those videos would be longer, or I wish you wouldn't, um, con like, give the artist not, like, um, a theme or the supplies, or uh, with the past years we had supplies, that you right. guys had to use or so um and i feel though uh, so so they think that that might be like too hard for you guys or it, it it doesn't like um give you the chance to really show what you do and i actually feel that that's the fun of it is like having something that makes you um triggers your creative jump start it's that's right? exactly right and for me that is my greatest, I guess my greatest gift as a teacher is mm -hmm. if I can, I can do, your cat just came into the room right behind your head. <laughs> uh, my greatest gift as a teacher is if I can get a student so excited that they want to run and make their own art. Right. And that's what I think Creative Jumpstart does. It does. It is exactly what you say it is. It's a creative jump start. Right. You give up the students enough information that they're like, oh, I gotta go try that, you know? And that's really. And I have that every yeah. time I see your uh, videos too. I really loved your video for uh, 2017. Do you want to give us a little hint of what it is about? Okay. Well, what is it? Mix, match, and master? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. So. You know, mixing for me, it's my favorite things. Um, collage and paint and stencils, and we're going to mix them and match them all up and, you know, hopefully have some mastery with them by the end. So I've got a little sneak peek. <laughs> Show us. Yay. <laughs> Look at those colors. Um, yeah, it was a fun project to do. I worked in my journal, but it could be done anywhere. The same techniques could be applied in mm -hmm. a number of different ways. So um, I, it's fun for me to get back to collage and paint. And I like to create in such a way that you don't know where one part begins or ends. And that Yeah, all you do that very together. well. It's like, where... Where is this? Did she do the stencil first, or when did she? Like, mm -hmm. I don't get it. What's happening? I, it's very <laughs> interesting uh, to me, and I really, really love that. And I watched you. I mean, I have seen you many times, and I've um, we have done our journaling life together too. And I always love how you, with very limited, sometimes like very few supplies, you create mm -hmm. this amazing dimension and lots of layers and it's just like so much fun to watch it so oh, i'm excited you. for your video yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um i know you're very busy we're both um this is going to be record it's recorded right before the holiday weekend so we both are very like 
we got to get stuff together. So <laughs> I don't want to hold you too long. But I wanted to know, um, is there anything that's coming up in the near future uh, with you that you want to point out? Yes, I'm, um, I'm not teaching too much out in the world anymore, just because of the limitations of the company. But I am doing a couple gigs with my friend Pam Carriker. Nice. We do uh, our Art Journal Road Show, and we will be at Jenny Doe's Crescendo Studios in March, and then we will be up at, um, in Whidbey Island in July. Wow. Which I'm so excited because it's like the perfect time to be on Whidbey Island, first of all, and um, the weather will be amazing. So I'm excited about that. And I'm thinking we're teaching somewhere else, but I can't think of it at the moment. So um, best way to keep track of me is um, probably the Stencil Girl newsletter. Just sign up for that and, and my webpage, mbshaw.com. Right. And also um, you do a lot of Facebook live uh I do. Right. So if you want to check out Mary Beth Shaw and her ama ma uh, amazing magic working with stencils, because she is a true stencil girl, then you unfiltered, should check out. Unfiltered and live. Um, December 30th, I'm doing one at, um, I want to say at 6 p.m. Central Time, December 30th. You would go to the Stencil Girl Products Facebook page for that. Oh, cool. Yeah, guys, check it out. Um, this yeah. interview is being posted before that happens. So you have yeah. four days to put it into your calendar. Thank you so much, Mary Beth. It was wonderful to talk to you. And um, have a happy holiday and see you soon. You too. <laughs> Thanks, Nat. Bye.